Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMama.com. In this video I want to show you how to teach your students about simplifying fractions. Let's first be reminded about the process of equivalent fractions where we split the pieces further. You remember? If I take each third and split it into two, uh, three new pieces, this third and this third and this third, each third gets divided into three more pieces, then we will have three times as much pieces and three times as much colored pieces. I show it like this, drawing these arrows here, and times three times three. Now we can reverse this process and instead of dividing the pieces further into smaller pieces, we take pieces and join them together to form larger pieces. So these two eighths are joined together. They become this one piece here. And each two white pieces here too. These two white pieces are joined together. And then these two, and then these two, to become these pieces. So now we have less pieces. And we saw, show it in a similar way with these arrows, but this time division. This is divided by two and divided by two. Both the numerator and denominator get divided by two, and so we have just half as many colored pieces and half as many total pieces in this picture. After students have understood this process well, then this should be very easy to understand. But it is still good to go through some visual exercises with, with visual models. For example, here I have four twelfths, and let's say that these four pieces are joined together. And it is as if these black lines between disappear, so we get just one piece here. And similarly, these four pieces are joined together, and these four are joined together, they become just one piece. So we have four times less pieces. And to show it, here with the fraction, divide by four. Four divided by four is one, one colored piece, and three total pieces, one third. Here another, and I'm sorry that my picture is not super good, it's hard to draw on board when you don't have tools or don't have software, okay? But we have six twentieth parts, and here each two slices can be joined together. These two thin slices can become one here, okay? We divide by two, the numerator by two, and the denominator by 2 to get 10, 3 tenths. Now, we need to also note that there is the same amount of pie to eat in each case, here and here. There are less pieces, but the pieces are bigger. You know, here we have 6 pieces, here 3 pieces. Less pieces, but bigger pieces. The amount is the same, the value of the fraction does not change in this process. The fraction itself does not get bigger. Its value is the same. It just becomes simpler looking. You know, when you have your numbers here are smaller, it looks simpler. Even the picture, it looks simpler. So that's why it's called simplifying. Uh, and we can also call it that it is in lower terms. Because the numbers 3 and 10 are smaller than the numbers used here. Okay, then after exercises with visual models, I like to give students these kind of exercises where there are numbers only, but the arrows are already here, and the, this is like a reminder that they need to divide by something, okay? This box is here. So what can you divide by? You have to have a number that you can divide by. 7 divided by something, and then 20 divided by something. So here is where the knowledge of the multiplication tables is crucial. The student has to recognize that 7 and 28 both are in the table of 7. They are divisible by 7, so we can divide by 7. And 7 divided by 7 is 1, and 28 divided by 7 is 4. It's simplified to 1 fourth. Here we have an improper fraction, but it is just fine to simplify it as is. We don't need to change it to a mixed number first. Just need to think 40 and 15. Is there any number that they both are divisible by? Do they have any common factor, in other words? And 5 is such a number. 
you divide both by 5, and 40 divided by 5 is 8, and 15 divided by 5 is 3. And after this you can write it as a mixed number if you need to. Now, these two examples are where we can simplify in several steps. Most school books try to teach you to simplify just in one step by finding the greatest common factor over these two numbers and then simplifying by that greatest common factor. But it's not necessary because we can just use, we can just simplify in several steps and arrive into the same result. For example, maybe in this particular case I notice at first that both numbers happen to be divisible by 4. And so I divide by 4, right? 48 divided by 4 is 12. And then 120 divided by 4 is 30. And then after that, maybe I notice that they are both still even numbers. And I can maybe divide by 2 and go on. Or maybe I notice that they are both divisible by 3 and I divide by 3. Okay, 12 divided, by, 12 divided by 3 is 4, and 30 divided by 3 is 10. And now I still notice they are both still even numbers, I can still divide by 2, divide both numerator and denominator by 2. I'm not dividing the fraction by 2. And I get 2 fifths. See? This is now in lowest terms, we say, because I cannot simplify it any further. So I went first, divide by 4, then I divide it by 3, and lastly by 2. And if I multiply this 4 times, 3 times 2, it's 24, that would have been, the, that is the greatest common factor of these two numbers, and I could have done this whole thing in single step if I had divided by 24. But it's not so simple to see. You know that you could divide by 24. Another example, I can see easily that these both are divisible by 5, because they end in 5. So let's divide by 5. 35 divided by 5 is 7. And then 100 divided by 5. Okay, that's a little trickier, but think this way. 100 divided by 5 is 20. And then there's one more 5, so I get 21. And now it's easy to see, huh, 7 and 21 are both in the table of 7, divisible by 7. So I can get 1 and third, one third. I divide it by 7. And 5 times 7 is the greatest common factor. This could have been done in single step if I had divided by 35. Lastly, it's important to come to this notion of lowest terms. And to notice that sometimes you cannot simplify. Some of these fractions cannot be simplified. They are already in their lowest terms, which means that the numerator and denominator cannot be any smaller numbers. For example, 22 and 15. They don't have any common factors. There are no numbers that you can divide both by. 22 could be divided by 2, but 15 cannot. So, this is already simplified to the lowest terms. Here, both are divisible by 2, so I can simplify to 19 and 21. But now I cannot simplify any further. 19 is prime. It's not divisible by anything but 19 and 1. So, this is in lowest terms. Here, both are divisible by 3. 27 divided by 3 is 9, and this one divided by 3 is 11. 9 over 11. Okay, now it doesn't simplify any further, because 11 is prime. And um, here, well, 29 is prime. I cannot simplify this any further at all. It is already in its lowest term. The same is true of this one. Can you see that? How about this one? Here, the numbers are a little bigger. You might need to use your knowledge of divisibility tests. If you remember, the divisibility test for 3, if I add 5 plus 1 equals 6. 6 is divisible by 3, and so is 51. 5 plus 4 is 9. 9 is divisible by 3, so this number is 2. I can simplify. 
I would divide by 3. 51 divided by 3 is 17, and then this is 18. So, and now it doesn't simplify any further. So this is now in its lowest terms. 